welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Coming up in this morning's show, we take to the skies. We return to the golden age of aviation. These PT-13 vintage planes are harder to find than ever, but we found one just for you, and we'll take you along for the ride. Then find out how inside this house, the lives of thousands of animals have been saved. Friends of the Animals Baton Rouge has such a unique approach and success rate, they could very well change how homeless animals are treated and saved worldwide. Plus, we take you to a new place in Baton Rouge where your furry four-legged friend gets to make new friends, play, and have some mental stimulation away from home. We'll show you why this is one of the fastest growing in the U.S. and a model for others across the country. Then, Dr. Nick on the power of positivity how to diminish the negative and pull out the positive in any situation. But first, history flying by. And if you look closely in the skies around our area, you just might see it. This is a Stearman PT-13. It was usually the first airplane a pilot would fly when training in World War II. It's rugged, forgiving, and a good teacher. This 64-year-old beauty now belongs to Baton Rouge plastic surgeon, Dr. Anthony Stevens. It was kind of like owning a little piece of history. He started flying as a teenager. I started flying probably when I was in high school, uh, taking lessons with uh, uh, some of the local guys around town. Eddie Dufford was kind of a, uh, the, when people think about taking flying lessons, they, his name comes up all the time. And so we started flying uh, at a young age. And but it was always the Stearman biplane he loved flying most. It does loops and beautiful aerobatics. This is the plane air show performers and those daring wing walkers just love. If you're gonna be in, a, in an air accident, if you will, I mean, this is probably the safest airplane you can be in. It's built so sturdy and it flies so slow. It's Most Stearmen survived the war and were sold as surplus for as little as $500. Some were turned into prized crop dusters and are still used today. The most iconic movie scene with a Stearman is Cary Grant being chased by one in North by Northwest. For Anthony, not only is this a piece of history, it's living history. He loves taking veterans like 91-year-old Jerry Zelmer, who worked with these planes in the war, back into the air. Seeing the old pilots and hearing the old stories, and I just love hearing those World War II stories. Mm -hmm. And so th when you fly to an airport, you can be next to the biggest jet in the world, but this thing, people are gonna come crowd around. You're gonna hear all the old stories of all the military guys. This PT-13 keeps history alive. That's the best part about flying, I think, is sharing it with someone. Coming down here flying by myself, I'll do that every now and then, but it's much more fun taking somebody that's never been up, especially in an open cockpit, you know, or a war plane and, you know, taking them out flying. He also uses his plane to help raise money for local charities. In fact, Kim won a chance to fly in it at a silent auction. So today, she gets her prize. Anthony is as cautious about flying as he is with surgery, as meticulous with his plane as he is with his patients. It's just back from North Carolina after a two-year total refurbishment. Every nut bolt on the entire airplane was taken apart and redone, reclad, all put on stainless. Time to wind her up, he does literally. They are radial engines and the cylinders are on the bottom, okay? okay? Oil collects in the bottom of the cylinders, or can. And what you wanna make sure is that you don't have oil trapped in the bottom of the cylinders. And so you'll see on all the old war, old war movies and the carriers, you'll see the guys turn these props through, okay? And you have to do that too? You turn, yeah, because the cylinder's a radial engine. and so. You feel for the compression, you make sure that it doesn't have a hydraulic lock, right? Okay. Because if you had a hydraulic lock and you were to crank it, the whole cylinder would come off the engine, which would be bad. But one last check on the winds. So it's getting better. If it's too windy, it could end badly. They've calmed, so they get ready for takeoff. So can I move this or is that steering? Uh, you Clear prop.
The PT-13 symbolizes the golden era of aviation. The pilot flies from the back using a classic instrument panel, a real joystick, all in an open cockpit. So Kim gets the front view all to herself. Although until they're in the air, neither can see much ahead of them. Anthony has to taxi using a constant series of zigzags or S-turns just to see what's in front of him. The tail wheel has no steering, so he makes those turns using the main wheel brakes. It's a lot more work than most planes, but a lot more fun too. Now, time for the best part. The PT-13's maximum speed is about 100 miles an hour. As she makes her ascent, the world melts away and the sky opens up. down to earth. But I think Kim's head is still in the clouds. It was amazing. We knew when he would take off, just that feeling of, here we go. Kim says the flight was sheer tranquility. It's real free and it's real quiet. The true love is this airplane. But Anthony has another one. Six people can fly in it. But he says piloting the two is like night and day. If, if you look at this one, this it's all glass cockpit. It's all it's like flying a video game. It's synthetic vision. So when you fly it, it, it looks like you're flying a video game. And <laughs> even when you get on the center line of that runway, it has all the lines in the runway. Wow. The airplane nowadays with all the, the software is so sophisticated, the autopilot will fly it to the ground. I mean, So I really could maybe fly an airplane one day. You, well, you could. I mean, literally, these, these airplanes are very easy to fly. Way you know, easier than that. And, well, you know, flying an airplane is a lot like I, I think of like anesthesia, okay? It's easy when you're in flight and cruise, right? Not much to do, sit back, read, sleep, whatever, okay? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> well, now you're the pilot. <laughs> well, we hope. <laughs> we, hope, we, hope, we hope. It's all about the landing and it's all about takeoff. Mm. And same thing with anesthesia. It's the going to sleep and it's the waking up. He feels flying the Skyway is safer than the highway. <laughs> flying today, uh, is probably much safer, I think, than driving in good weather. Flying the PT-13, though, is the pinnacle. Now for some four-legged fun. If you're looking for a new pet or you're just an animal lover, this story is for you. There's an amazing group that has saved thousands of animals from euthanasia right here in our area. And it's so unique, I haven't been able to find one like it anywhere in the country. Welcome to the Dog Adoption House. What they do here is extraordinary. In this home-like setting right off Highland Road in South Baton Rouge, Friends of the Animals Baton Rouge rescues, rehomes, and saves as many dogs and puppies from euthanasia in the animal shelter as they can. Paula Shane is founder and executive director. And we wanted something that people could come and feel like they were at home and visit with the animals. If you're looking for a pet, 
Here you can see, touch, and play with all of them seven days a week. What's extraordinarily unique about this house is none of the animals spend the night. They all go home with a foster family, then come back the next day. It's like a doggy daycare. If you work, you drop your dog off, early morning drop off, just like school, between 7.30 and 9. And then we open at 11.30 to 5.30 so people that work can pick up after work. So um, it's funny because you have all different kinds of dogs. You have like school. You have the shy ones, the outgoing ones, the one that, you know, are just sweet. So it, it really does. I used to teach. It really reminds me of, you know, being in school. Patty Carson is a former teacher too. She fostered her first puppy three years ago. She loves it so much, she's still doing it. I taught third grade the last probably 10 or 15 years I taught, but I taught everything. I taught first through fifth, and I, and I, and I loved it. I loved kids, you know, they were, and kids and animals um, aren't that much different. They're loving and they, they want to please. You'll find dogs of all ages, breeds, and personalities here. They're loved, nurtured, and at least every hour, they get to go outside and use the restroom and play. There's something for everyone here, but puppies are Patty's passion. Sometimes she'll foster up to four at a time. I wake up every day excited about what I do. And, it, and I have a control over it. You know, there, there, there are not that many things in your, in your life that you can have control over, but I can get a, get a puppy and I can, you know, find a good home for it. And it's a satisfaction. It's absolute satisfaction. But you certainly don't have to be retired to foster an animal. Clara Calm is a chemist, a newlywed, and has two dogs of her own. She's been fostering since September. They were so great. They um, they let you pick the dog that you want. Like, you know, you tell them if you want a small or a big dog, young or old, and it's just been so rewarding. And they, they, they go out pretty fast. They get adopted out really fast. In six months, Clara's fostered 11 dogs. All are now in permanent loving homes. Is it kind of sad? Is it bittersweet or is it joy? It's joy. I mean, it is bittersweet because I do get attached to them. They, um, they do take a little piece of my heart with them, but they're going to such good homes and I keep in touch with their fosters and make, make sure they're doing okay. And it's been really great. But they won't let just anyone adopt these dogs. They want it to be the perfect match. So we do adoption applications. We check vet references. You know, a lot of us like to go to the home because when they're, once they're in our family, they're part of our family. And we want to make sure they're going to the right home for them because they all have, you know, personality and you just want to make sure it's going to be a good fit. Like it's the fosters who ultimately decide whether or not it's the right family fit. I asked Patty if that was difficult. No, because people, a lot of times people will say, I couldn't let them go. But when they're going to the right homes, you know that that that's where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking about the next one you need to get out. So I don't ever let my dogs go to a home that I don't feel comfortable with. And we're fortunate that we've had, we have wonderful people coming in wanting to adopt. Before the dogs arrive here, they were first pulled from the East Baton Rouge Parish Animal Shelter. That's the only place we pull dogs from. So we will go out there and they, uh, they're very, wonderful to us. Uh, we'll go look, we'll temperament test the dogs because they have to be able to get along with the other dogs mm -hmm. here. And we try to get diversity. We don't want someone walking in here and saying, oh, don't go there. You're going to see the same animals. You know, they're all one breed. So we're looking for a lot of different things. And we have a pool team and, you know, it, it, it's been good. Here, these dogs get a second chance for a happy home and life-saving medical treatments. We take heartworm positive dogs, which there are a lot in Louisiana because you, you, the dog becomes heartworm positive, they are bitten by a mosquito. So these stray dogs have them and we will pay for the treatment. Even though they're adopted, we don't want it to be a deterrent for people not adopting. So we pay for the treatment, which can get it to be expensive. And that's where our donations come in. We really need that. We pay for all their medical that hadn't been done if it was done at the shelter, great, but if it hasn't, we, you know, we make sure they're up to date on all their shots, spayed and neutered, and heartworm treated. Paula's love of animals started early. 
My grandmother would have uh, squirrels that she'd rescue. My mom and dad, we always had animals. You know. Paula's turned that love into what could be a model program for how we treat and save animals across the country. We had someone from um, out of state come and they traveled the United States and they said, we really don't know where there's something like this that exists. In fact, it's not just locals interested in adopting here. I have a, a lady that contacted me from Arkansas today and she's very interested in Rosie and I think she's going to drive down and get her. They spread the word through their impressive Facebook page and they do weekly off-site adoptions at places like Perkins Row, the Farmer's Market, and Whole Foods, to name just a few. But without volunteers and foster families, all of this would not be possible. We're in great need of fosters. I mean, fosters are key. If we don't have fosters, we can't pull from the shelter. And people say, well, how long do you keep your foster? Well, it just depends. Uh, I've had a, a foster for less than 24 hours. You just don't know what people, what's going to hit somebody when they walk in. Living in a foster home helps dogs develop confidence, compatibility, and companionship. Anyone can foster a dog, even short term, for a night or even a weekend. It's whatever suits someone's time schedule and lifestyle. The payoff, while not in dollars, is big. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. If you'd like to know more about adopting a pet or even volunteering, you can email them at friendsoftheanimalsbr at gmail.com. And coming up as Weekends with Whitney continues, daycare goes to the dogs. It's so impressive, even in these dog days of summer, it might have you wishing you had four legs and fur. Plus, Dr. Nick on the power of positivity and how it can energize your whole world next. This segment brought to you by our friends at Wayne Stabler Companies. Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. Well, summer is filled with all kinds of camps for kids, but did you know there's a camp for dogs? And not just in the summer either, 365 days a year, right here in Baton Rouge. Welcome to Camp Bow Wow, where there's definitely a wow factor. It's a place where owners are referred to as parents, their pets as their furry children. In this 14,000 foot facility, your pooch gets indoor and outdoor play areas, pup pools, play equipment, certified camp counselors. Six. Yes. Even certified training if you want, all to ensure a doggone good day. <laughs> Piper is one of today's campers. She's still just a puppy. Owner Fran Gaucher brings her here three times a week for training and socialization. We knew with this breed we wanted her to be socialized and trained and, um, you know, have a lot of interaction with other puppies too. Patrick Ransom has been training dogs for 15 years. Sit. Stay. He's been at Camp Bow Wow since the doors opened. Yeah. The idea that Baton Rouge has a place where your dog can get this uh, mental stimulation, physical exercise, and socialization is incredible. Happy, healthy pets, happy, healthy parents. Today, 125 dogs are here. Some will spend the night, but the majority are here for a day of fun. These camp counselors ensure it's also a safe one. They're even certified in CPR for dogs. They have a huge responsibility because this is their children that we're taking care of. You can see that care on your cell phone or computer via their 31 camp cameras. 
you know what's going on. It's not like you have to guess, is my dog having fun? Is, what, is my dog having a good time at camp today? You see them on camera and you know what they're doing. The attention to detail here is impressive. So what are these? Um, so these are our cabins. Um, they are only in here when they eat or sleep, um, or okay. if they're in a timeout, or if the parents are suggesting a nap in the middle of the day. It's very detailed. We have their picture of them. We have all the stuff that they came in with, whether they can get a campfire treat, which I'll show you in a little while, and exactly <laughs> how much they eat when they eat it. So when they pick up, we know exactly if there's something wrong or anything. That we have all the, it's very, very detailed. Wow. Um, and the parents can bring whatever they want for them. That's their bed and blanket that's on top of our cot, but we provide cots, blankets, fleeces, um, anything that's, com that's comfortable for them. Even the doors are dog proof, so, you know, the little escape artist can't get out. Now, we're getting ready to walk over here, and it's going to get a little bit louder because, of course, I'm new, and so, well, I guess they all want to greet me. Here are the four play yards where they'll spend most of their day. They're separated by size. The big dogs have two of the four areas so the counselors can balance out the energy levels. Our presence certainly brings that energy level up. It's normally pretty quiet back here. Now that Kim's going in, they're doggone excited. Covered our outdoor play yards, which so when it's pouring down rain um, or just bad weather in general, the dogs could still go outside and enjoy it. I have a huge fan out there for when it's super hot in the summer, so even the shorts now the dogs can go out and not overheat. Um, and it's a special canine turf out there that we put, so it's kind of like grass, but it's even softer, they don't tear it up. And it's got a water system that shoots underneath it, so when they go to the bathroom, it flushes it all through the trench, the trench drain. Um, and we have puppy pools for them to play in. It's, it's just, a, it's a lot of fun. That's what it's all about, you know. They come here to have a good time, and that's what they do. And if for some reason a dog's having a bad day and it isn't really in the camp, we let the parents know. We say, hey, you know, Bella's not having a good time here today. Maybe you might want to come pick her up, or we can just put her in the cabin for you and whenever you're ready. Everything, even down to their food, is meticulously calculated. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner if they want, when they've eaten, how much they've eaten, and if they have a food that needs to be refrigerated, it's just right here, too. Such a fun business. It is. It's such a serious business at the same time. Camp Bow Wow is located right near Women's Hospital. It's the fastest growing one in the country and a model now for all others to follow. The demand is so great, Drew's now looking into opening one or even two more locations in our area. It is a break for me. <laughs> it's like mommy's day out but for the dog too. <laughs> it solves a lot of problems that people might be having with their dogs at home. Excessive chewing. Chewing, the separation anxiety, things like that. When they come here, all that, I mean, they get, they get all that energy out. They get, you know, and so when they go home, they're just, the, I love hearing the stories of the parents saying, my dog is such a better dog, so much happier. For a full list of prices and services, head to their website, campbowwow.com. This morning, we're sitting down with Dr. Nick and we're talking about positivity it's a buzzword these days and what is it and what is it not dr nick joins us with good morning me. a lot of times we can become negative there can be negative people around us how do we avoid that being that becoming that or dealing with that what i love to kind of say to people is that we live in a dualistic culture whitney dualistic mindset dualistic thoughts dark light uh positive negative and so we have to kind of fight that a little bit too but it's because i don't think positivity is just always up Sure. You know, when you're high, you gotta come down. Are you with me? So sure. you know, it's not about just always staying up or always being down, and it's not about being bored either. It's about a sense of st emotional stability, making good choices, looking forward instead of always reflecting back, thinking of of, of all is well. There's a great mystic that said, uh, "All is well in everything. All is well." Mm. You, you hear the positivity in that? Absolutely. Everything. Life is enough. I am enough. There is no major threat today. That to me is positivity. It's and it's a, and it's interpreting the world that way too. What about negative people? When a lot of times we're around them, they bring you down. How, can we? Are we responsible for turning them around? You know, th the first thing that comes to me, and I and I tend to see this more and more in myself, is I will redirect the conversation. Mm. You know, a lot of times we can change the mood by not responding by changing the subject. And while at first it might look like that's rude, it's really not. It also is about seeing the world and reading the world. 
interpreting the world as worthwhile mm -hmm. and myself as worthwhile. I'm constantly stunned by the negative messages people bring to me. I'm no good, I'm worthless, I failed at this, I'm a failure. Do you hear? I made a mistake, I'm a mistake. That's where negativity feeds off of. And how do they not, not feed those feelings they have about themselves? You stay in the moment, you stay in the behavior, you stay in the next right choice. You okay. don't live in the history, in the past. You say, I, I am 59 years old, I'm not 15. That's positivity. Live in the possibility of today of and to tomorrow. And, and accepting all that wonderful life experience that's, that you bring with you, and even some of the baggage that brings, because we learn from mistakes. But, but moving forward in a sense that I have much to offer, because we do, we're all very resourceful. Very Great. resourceful. It's always I'm, a pleasure. It's, you get me so excited, I get positive. <laughs> well, and we love positive. <laughs> Much more Weekends with Whitney right after this. Hi, I'm Robert Meyer, inviting you to spend some of your summer in beautiful new roads. Hit the water of False River for fishing, swimming, boating, and more. Feast on the finest food anywhere at our award-winning restaurants. Get in some retail therapy strolling our unique stores and take in some of our wonderful culture. Spend the day or spend the week. Whatever you do, spend some time in new roads. Thanks so much for spending part of your Sunday with me here on Weekends with Whitney. Don't miss next week's show because I'm taking you to Canada. We're going to go to Winnipeg, Kenora, and into Lake of the Woods. But as we leave you this morning, we head back into the skies where pigs fly and more. Mm -hmm.